Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. This is Yankee and the Brit. And we're going to talk five NFL players suspended for gambling, Jalen Hurts contract, and what Maddie's Cowboys and my Vikings needs or what we think their needs are in the draft. Maddie's yeah, coming to you. show today. Pack show. Still in Thailand. Yeah, I was just I'm, I'm coming for... Still in Thailand. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... I'm still in Thailand and we're on this Thai Wi-Fi right now. So let's see let's see how it holds up for the entire show. So if I drop in and out, I apologize. Well, it's still got to be better than that Canadian internet. Um, yeah, we've got to be right. <laughs> well, Maddie, let's talk about the five players suspended. I pulled up the NFL um, report right here. Let um, So the ones who got a year got suspended for a year for gambling on actual NFL games. Um, Williamson from the Lions and one of the other players got six games because they were gambling on college, but from the NFL facility. <laughs> wow. Are they allowed to gamble on college from home? I guess so. I guess. I don't know. I thought they weren't allowed to gamble on anything. But I guess the yeah. way it sounded when I was listening to Ian Rappaport today was that the problem was is that they were gambling on college, but it was in an NFL facility, which is um, like forbidden. Wow. I mean, like I, I'm just surprised that they can gamble on any football. So like uh, Ivan Tony, who plays, who's a striker for Brentford, which is a football team in London, uh he got he's in deep trouble for gambling on like some team halfway across the world that he has nobody no connections to and it wasn't him like he was it was through like a syndicate as well but it seems weird that they can gamble on it but just not in the NFL's facility with well, James and Williams sense, right like yeah. just gambling's legal so if it's on a different sport, there's no way you can affect the outcome of that game and tarnish the shield, right? Yeah, like different sport, fine. But like college football. He can't affect it, though. That's like telling them they can't go to Vegas and hit the roulette table. Yeah, but he can totally affect it. They could totally affect it, like college football. They could say, oh, I'll put in a good word for you when it comes to the draft. I'll do this. I'll do that for like college players. Stop. Like no NFL they can, player, they can. Gonna, like no GMs listed to the player either. They to they they totally could affect college football. Just bet on basketball. You know what I mean? Like why do you have to why why well, play it so close know. to the chest? <laughs> you bet what you know, what? right? Like yeah. and yeah. what do you know better than the sport you're a professional in? Yeah, but it's just why why play so close with the they rules? They should have known one. better because of Calvin Ridley. Plus, mm -hmm. all but one of the players, correct, are all Lions, or at least three of them. Two of them got cut already right off the bat. And a bunch of the staff for the Lions, like the fucking the trainers and shit, got fired because they were in on the gambling too. Yeah, so they were clearly doing it together in the facility, which is really mad. Um Jameson Williams is an upsetting person for that to, for him to do that. Do you see all the reports coming out now out of college? There was red flags about his character. Uh, no, I haven't, but I feel it's like easy. it's easy to surface them. Now. I was going to say it's easy time to pile on. But yeah. It makes me wonder if that's part of the reason why Kowasi was cool with pulling the trigger and letting them go grab him. Like this kid's got problems anyway. I'll trade within my division. Go ahead and get him. Yeah. There was also the injury. I think the injury was the biggest red flag. Surely the fact that he doesn't play for the first year at all, but it's, it's quite sad that he's, he's now up for six more games in a lions team that the lions team look like they're on an upwards trajectory. And then all of a sudden they, they become the lions again and do shit like this. Secondly, I'm telling you, I think they overachieved last year anyway, and I think that's where they'll <laughs> be again this year. So, yeah, we'll see. Secondly, when I saw the name CJ Moore on the sheet, I was like, holy shit, Justin Fields can't get a break because I thought it was. Oh, yeah, it was you DJ got your DJ. I was like, Moore oh, right God. 
It's like, for yeah. fuck's sake, I was like, an important storyline to the Yankee and the Brits podcast this year what? is Justin Fields' development now that he has a number one wide receiver. I think and Justin Fields... I thought he fixed suspended. Justin Fields not getting caught for gambling and suspended was an unlucky break for the Bears. <laughs> That's a crazy thing to say. Well, I mean, that that four win team they got going there that's really exciting for bears fans moving <laughs> forward but so yeah my last thing i'll say is they should have known better kelvin ridley yeah um he, they saw what happened with kelvin ridley and the nfl made it very clear yeah. again that they are we, not going to tolerate we, we, it yeah i mean with the way that with the way that the do, do, do you think the league is kind of hypocritical? Like, it's another one of those hypocritical rules that the league have enforced, right? Where should you really be suspending people for smoking weed? Like, no, well, they no, don't it's anymore. legal in, in your state. Yeah, I know, Under but the, it took CBA, how... you can be You still get fined, but you no longer get put in the substance abuse program or suspended. But that's yeah, but why are they, why is, they getting fined? <laughs> there's fucking scratch tickets, like lottery tickets that are the team and the team gets a percentage of those. So like you can go buy green Bay Packer scratch ticket, win money or season tickets. You can buy Indianapolis Colts, Vikings ones. Um, so I just wonder like that's super hypocritical too. And now I guess Pat McAfee was saying that they've always been trying to crack down on gambling in the locker room, like with dominoes or playing cards or anything like that, but yet they have lottery tickets. Yeah. It's, it's this idea that, NFL players are supposed to be holier than holier than now. Like they have to live by a different set of rules than the rest of society. I'm not really sure why that applies to NFL players, really. Like it's a bit of a strange, like it's a strange NFL players are a strange group of people that are often from backgrounds where that is to where this kind of behavior is totally acceptable. So why, when they get to the NFL, are they expected to live by a different set of rules than everybody else? If they live in a state where gambling is legal, then it should be fine. I, I think playing it, like, it's a bit fucking stupid to just bet on college football because you know that, like, it's obvious. But the and then the guys who've been suspended problem. for a year. It was the college football wasn't a problem. It was the guy, it was that it was in the facility. Yeah. And then the other guys were gambling yeah. on NFL games. Which is, that's just outright fucking stupid. Like, that is just dumb. Like, don't do it. Like, just don't do that. But at the same time, the NFL it's, shouldn't be sat there pretending. It's all that about it's protecting legal. that shield, right? Like, yeah. Dan Snyder selling the commander. So we're never going to hear about all the scumbag shit he did, even though they're doing that so-called independent investigation. But is it really independent when you're paying the motherfucker who's doing the investigation? Like you hired them for a job. Mm -hmm. like, and they, yeah, the they, NFL just plays those games. Like though, they'll know. They, right. It's all about optics. That's yeah. all it boils down to is they don't ever want it to look like somebody fixed a game or in this case it, they were betting on other teams but everybody knows somebody in those locker rooms and you could get some insider information which is illegal when it comes to sports gambling in the u.s like having that kind of knowledge so if i know that they're like if you're going into a game against brady and you know his knee sore and his right right shoulder sore like that's the big part of the information when you're gambling yeah but it's not that like so like professional gamblers are privy to that information as well. But you get more when you have friends they, they in the locker be, room. Yeah, they shouldn't be they shouldn't be betting on the NFL. That's fucking ridiculous. Like that's just dumb. But like there's no way it, they gambled inside of a building that's in a what's state weird where it is legal to gamble on. Yeah, that's you know what's what weird I mean? to me. The Williamson one is like so. What he did wasn't against the rules, but where he did it broke the rules. That's kind of weird to me. So, like, if he was sitting at home, it was fine. But because he did it while he was eating lunch or something at the facility, now it's a problem. Yeah, this is, 
does the Detroit Lions facility have some sort of embassy rules where the rules of like all NFL the embassy the, uh, is what applies, not not the rules of the state. <laughs> like yeah, it's, no, just, all it's just a bit strange. All NFL. It's an NFL embassy. It's an NFL embassy where the rules of the NFL apply, not the rules of the state. It's just dumb thing to do. Like really fucking stupid. But like just the guys who are suspended for six games, I think are a bit hard done by. Just pay the fine and move on. I think. All right, Maddie, let's talk some Jalen Hurts getting paid and good for him. I know there's a lot of haters out there right now, but Jalen earned that contract. And it's Howie Roseman did it again because it's a really team friendly deal. Like it's mm -hmm. like five million cap hit this year, 21 million next year, 30 something after that. Like because and essentially it's a six year contract. They always say extension, but it's a six year contract because he's got his last year of his rookie deal and then five years added on. So they can mm -hmm. spread all that money out nicely. But the agent always wants it to look like, Oh, it's a five year deal. Yeah. Five year deal, $255 million. It's really funny when you compare it to Daniel Jones's contract. Like I can't believe the amount of hate for getting paid, but then you compare all of it to Daniel Jones's contract and it's just fucking wild. Like Jalen Hurts' contract is so team friendly. It's a really, it's a really good, it's a really good contract. I, I'm, I'm kind of semi surprised in it. Like Jalen Hurts, I like Jalen Hurts. You know, I'm a fan of Jalen Hurts. I think he's the real deal. I was surprised that it was this much when he got paid this year due to. He had he had this season that was a really really good season like incredible season. The season before was a bit like was a bit more up and down. So but you saw it, yeah, exactly. You saw that he has it. So you saw that he has it. So you pay the money early because if it, if he does it fucking again, then you're screwed. There is no chance for team friendly deal. So the reason that they're able to do it this year, the reason to do it this year, and why why there's a lot of haters, I kind of. I empathize with their point. Like, I get the point that they're trying to make. But if Jalen Hurts does it again this year, Howie Roseman clearly thinks he's going to do it again this year. I, You've seen it. He's taken them to a Super Bowl and was the better quarterback in that Super Bowl. You you, you see that. And so you pay him early because now you can make it a team-friendly deal. You don't get stuck with, like, the Dak Prescott contract, which in reality is not as bad now looking at what other people get. But you're right though because it's that because it's a six essentially a six-year deal because of his last year on the rookie deal because they don't really extend you they rip that old contract up and write you a new one but year one is the exact same as your fifth year, or your it would be his fourth year so it gives them more room to spread it out and if you really look at the contract it's a three-year 106 million dollar deal because the eagles can get out of it after three years but if he balls out they have control over his rights for six it's a great contract and a second round draft pick cashes in. I think it was a win-win for both of them. Yeah, I mean it was when they came into the when he came into the league as an Eagle, I was like I was like, this could cause some real trouble in the Eagles organization because how how's Carson Wentz gonna do? But also I love the draft pick of Jalen Hurts. Like the draft pick of Jalen Hurts made so much sense to me. I didn't I, I didn't get how it got that far down. I was big on Jalen Hurts when he came out. Um, <clears throat> like over Jordan Love, for example, like easily. I think um, it was him losing his job to Tua that hurt him, even though that was a stupid reason. to. Because if you look, he came back in and saved their ass after Tua got hurt. Yeah, and he killed it in, and he killed it in Oklahoma, Oklahoma. as well. Yeah. yeah, he killed it in Oklahoma. Um, so I, I, yeah, I really like Jalen Hurts. This contract makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you split it over the six years, it's $42.5 million a year, which is like, okay. You know, what's crazy but, to me. Yeah. Go on. He is getting crushed. They're getting crushed. Cause it's, oh, it's too much money for him. It's too big of a contract. He doesn't deserve it. When Josh Allen comes up and tops this contract, nobody's going to say shit, but Jalen Hurts has accomplished more in three years 
than um, than uh, they have in Buffalo with Josh Allen since he's been there. Yeah, and the, the other part of this is who's going to complain when Joe Burrow is is topping it as well. Who's gonna, I think even who's though they haven't won a Super Bowl, or, and they and I think everybody agrees that Burrow is a top two or three quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. I don't think that about Josh Allen anymore, but he's still getting a pass where I'm saying Jalen Hurts doesn't. That was kind of my point. Yeah, and, and nobody's going to be bothered about Joe Burrow coming up either. And the the realistic the realism is that Joe Burrow also has only been to one Super Bowl and lost in that Super Bowl. And Jalen Hurts was probably closer to the MVP race this year than Joe Burrow was uh, in that season where he went to the Super Bowl. I'm not saying that Jalen Hurts is better than Joe Burrow, like by no means, but they've accomplished the same shit in their career. Like they've done the same stuff. No, I, I'm good for Jalen, good for the Eagles, even though, you know, I fucking hate the Eagles, but. Um, yeah. How does yeah, it affect yeah. Lamar Jackson, do you think? I'm convinced Lamar is wants to ride the Kirk Cousins train on two yeah. franchise tags and out the door. Otherwise, he'd be negotiating. Like, there's no mm-hmm. negotiation going on. He, I think he really wants to play out these two years, and I think he's looking at these two years on the franchise tag like, I'm going to take home 80-plus million in two years, and then I'm going to hit the open market again. I really think that's what he thinks, but who knows? If... It's not his plan, and he's still fucking not negotiating. Then I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, I. He could just be. He could just be like, I don't want to be a Baltimore Raven anymore, and I'm sitting out. Is the other way that that could go? But he did say with the he whole OBJ out, thing. Because, hmm? Lamar said he wouldn't sit out. Yeah. On Twitter, he said that he, he'll be there under the franchise tag. Like, I don't think he's yeah. playing that card. So that's what's weird to me. Like, there's no real hardball, but no negotiations. It's the strangest shit I've ever seen. Yeah, he either wants to play, like, he either wants to just jump straight on the franchise tag and is fine with that, ride that out, or he's just saying, I, I want, I still want this contract. I just don't want it from you. Like, is where he's, is, is the right. other way that he's doing it, which with the OBJ thing, it's it's different. With the Jalen Hurts contract now, the fact that Jalen Hurts didn't get this fully guaranteed deal, I think it kind of it hurts Lamar in a sense because it takes like it takes that fully guaranteed money kind of almost off the table now. Lamar Jackson does have an MVP, and Lamar Jackson is closer and better runner than Jalen Hurts, like just in a different way to Jalen Hurts. Obviously, Jalen Hurts is a power, he, has more power runner. I think if Lamar wanted a three-year fully guaranteed deal, they'd do it. Like, I think it's the years. Like, no team's going to want to give you five years fully guaranteed. I think they'd give you three, though, because if they were willing to give you 133 over the first three years guaranteed on that one contract, right? Uh, that they offered him. You don't think they, he could have got him to 150? That's 50 a year, three years, fully guaranteed. But like, I don't think, like, I don't, I don't think Lamar needs to get an agent like everybody else. But if he had an agent, the rest of us would know what the fuck is really going on more. Yeah, I think he, I think the money in Jalen Hurts' contract helps him out a lot. Like the 255 million for Jalen Hurts when Lamar Jackson has an MVP has done it over a longer span of time than Jalen Hurts is going to help him. Like, like obviously, then come to it as well. So that, that's the thing he has over Lamar. But he has that, um, the money that's out there, the, the 200 billion for five year, five, five year deal is, um, is going to help him, is going to help him a lot going forward in his negotiations. I'm on the train of I think it will be better at this point for Lamar Jackson to have a um Lamar Jackson to have an agent. Like I think it just would make more sense just because better advice, like just from the business mind, like you have all of this kind of thing. But I'm not angry at him for not having an agent. Like represent yourself. That's fine. Yeah. I 
we watched a lot of other players without agents negotiate their own mm-hmm. deals. Bobby Wagner, Sherman, we can keep going on. So um, this is a little off top topic, but we're since we're talking about quarterbacks and I want to bring this up because this is big news and I want to ask you your thoughts. So what do you think about the reports that the Texans will not draft C.J. Stroud because he shares the same agent as Deshaun Watson? Yeah, there's got to be other reasons to making a decision. Well, now they're that, saying that it? he scored, like his scores on yeah. the S2 or on whatever S2. are just ass. Yeah, I mean, he did score low on the S2. Why do we even know that, though? That's the yeah. question. Why do you and yeah. I even know that? I've I've never heard about an S2 thing in my entire life. And I guess they do it uh, in a lot of sports, but it's new to the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, it's he's in the 18th percentile in his S2 scores. And the reason that we know that is because Oh, Maddie froze up on us a little bit. Hopefully he'll be back. But I'll give you my opinion while he's gone. Why I think those S2 scores came out is yeah. because I, and I'm not saying this team for sure, but a team like Indianapolis leaked those fucking scores to get him to drop. And I'm not saying it's Indy. I don't know if it's Chris Ballard. But whoever drafts this kid, you can guarantee they're the ones who leaked that fucking shit about his bad scores. Yeah, that's why – That's sorry, that's what I was saying before, like, we got caught. I thought I was we like, were on it's the same page. I was like, it's 100% Indy <laughs> that want him to drop. Or the Texans, like – Would rather go the way of um, uh, best D lineman in the draft, best Neil Anderson, Tyreen Tyreen Wilson. Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I could totally see them wanting to do pick him second overall, and then pick up Hayden Hooker twelfth. I could totally see that. That's a totally legitimate drafting process to do it does mean you basically throw in this year away as well but and again davis mills and case keenum we'll see and i was thinking about this so if you build the uh if you build that defense up like it was in san francisco and that's the the tree that they're following because even the offensive coordinators from san francisco D'Amico ryan's Maybe they're like, we don't need a top quarterback to get to where we want to go because San Francisco has been balling out for years and have not had a top quarterback. And D'Amico Ryan's watched what happens when they traded up for Trey Lance, not that they would have to trade up, but picking the wrong guy screws you. So if you're not sold on C.J. Stroud or even any of these quarterbacks, why not build that defense up? And then, you know what I mean, go from there. You got – I mean, Davis Mills is fucking serviceable. It's not his mm-hmm. fault he had Lovey Smith as a head coach. Like, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes, it, and I'm not saying he's an all pro, but sometimes when a guy is not what we planned him to be and we call him a bust, maybe we should look at the situation and the coaches. Like, I still believe that Zach Wilson's problems are that he went to a defensive head coach and didn't have a good fucking sense to go we're gonna sit a young kid for a year and let him develop i think that's a lot of the problem yeah i think zach wilson has some things outside of the locker room that's an issue as well i can go through through, uh 25 off the top of my head guys that i think were ruined by their coaches that's kind of my point you know yeah 100 100 i i totally get that i never understand the whole thing of like if you're not amazing by the age of of 25 then you're not ever going to be a good NFL player. Like I I just and don't you can like go through there's guys like Kerry Collins and like different dudes that did not take off in their career until they were older. I it just I, it it blows me away that people don't look through the history of the NFL on guys who actually matured. And I got this um theory that you when your athletic ability is here and your football experience is here, if your athletic ability doesn't drop too fast and your football IQ grows, There's a sweet spot for a quarterback that wasn't great when he was young to have a four year, five year good career at the end of his career. You know, I just, I'm with you. It baffles me. 
Yeah, Gino Smith is the one, isn't it? Like, really, that shows that. Gino you know Smith's another um, good one, Jake, but, which, Yeah. <clears throat> I was just saying, you can go all the way back to, like, before Kerry Collins. I mean, like, the NFL is littered yeah. with guys who had decent careers after they got older. Yeah, and obviously, with, with, with CJ Stroud, like, there are issues, but we're just getting to that. We're getting to that point of the year now where it's just – nothing in the media is really true. Like it's all just a game to try and get guys to drop. Like I do believe that the Texans might not want to pick a quarterback second, second overall. Like I do believe that, but I don't believe it's anything to do with CJ Stroud's uh, agent or like, it's not, it's not helpful. Well, who knows what it's was not- said between Watson's agent though. And that team when they were battling back and forth and, who knows? Casario might have some hard fucking feelings from what some of the stuff that might have been said to him. I don't know. I just know yeah, that it's not helpful though. If you don't think that CJ Stroud's the second best player in the draft and you want to build somewhere else, I don't have a problem mm-hmm. with it. No, one hundred percent. The only issue, the the only issue with that is you then if you do if you think that CJ Stroud is the second best quarterback in the draft and he goes to Indy in your division, then you well, might be in a little bit of trouble. And, and like CJ Stroud turns out to be good. And I think CJ Stroud is not fit in the like. So um, Peter King is convinced that Indy is so in love with Will Levis that that's where Will Levis is going, no matter who's still on the board. Mm. So CJ Stroud drops past that. Unless somebody trades to three to grab him, right? Like that's the sweet spot. Yeah. The Cardinals at three. Yeah, kind of like the Texans. <clears throat> the the Texans dream scenario. It looks like maybe either take CJ Stroud second overall, or draft your guy second overall, defensive line, or trade back to the Seahawks at five if they want a quarterback. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you still get a really good defensive player at five. I don't know. Yeah. I, that's gonna make it's gonna make next week, next Thursday, very exciting though to see what happens at that number two spot and watch it be all about nothing. And they're like, the Texans take C.J. Stroud, C. Ohio Stroud. State quarterback, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's somebody a bit further down the draft, like Indy or the Raiders or someone like that who wants a quarterback who's trying to just put shit out into the world to see what can happen and who they can get to fall. All right. Well, Maddie, let's talk some draft needs for the Cowboys and the Vikings. Mm-hmm. What What is your ideal first round? What do the Cowboys do in the first round for you that is like your perfect scenario? So I think the Cowboys need, like, this isn't a very Cowboys way to draft, but I think they need to be quite... Uh, They need to be quite nimble. They need to be quite aggressive in this draft to get us over the hump. We need this. There's a lot of depth in this draft, but there's not a lot of blue chip players. And my ideal situation is if, uh, if Carter drops past 10, like Joel Klatt had Carter in his, Joel Klatt in his top 50 NFL players, Carter dropped to like 12 or 13 or something like that. If I'm the Cowboys, I'm moving up to go get Carter if he drops outside the top 10. 100%. That's what I want. Um, if Obviously, I, so I'm, I, I really think a big, strong defensive lineman, blue chip defensive lineman to add to that defensive front would be great. So obviously, Stefan Gilmore uh, solidifies the... Well, it solidified your secondary. I know that's what you were saying about Stefan Gilmore. But I'll jump in quick with my uh, dream scenario. But this, I think this really could happen for the Vikings in the first round while we wait for Maddie to come back. I think. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> all right. Well, well, go ahead. You can finish while you're back. Oh, he's gone again. Here we go. Yeah. So, all I, right. Carter uh, and then a. 
Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> um, like a Carter moving up and taking that form of blue chip player, or um, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of taking running backs in the draft, but BJ Robinson would be. Um, he kind of he creates that double headed monster in the backfield with Tony Pollard. If we get um, if we get a guy like that, he's a real on a team. Like if you get the right kind of running back, he's a total difference maker. That's where I'd look the defensive line and running back is why I'd be in the first round. All right. Well, for me, Maddie, you're not going to like me, but this is what I think is going to happen. I think in the first round, the Minnesota Vikings trade with the Washington Commanders. They swap picks. The Commanders give the Vikings a fourth round pick, and we send Daniil Hunter to Washington, and they take quarterback Hayden Hooker, Tennessee. They swap picks, get a fourth, but they send Daniel Hunter to the Commanders. Yeah. How much does – how – if if the Texans – if the Texans draft defensive time second overall, I don't see Hayden Hook again past 12. Like, again, there's a – surely they've got to take the quarterback at 12 there. No, I don't think they're <laughs> drafting a quarterback in the first round. I don't think they're sold on any of them. And I think D'Amico Ryans yeah. wants to build that defense because he comes from San Francisco where they went to Super Bowls and NFC Championships games predicated on defense and running the ball. Mm -hmm. And when D'Amico Ryans was a player, that's how they played the game too, defense and running the ball. We will scheme, and it's a Shanahan scheme. We can take an average quarterback and scheme him into winning games. They did it with every quarterback they've had since fucking Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, they won with Nick Mullins, okay? Yeah. I mean, I, I, for the let's just, I pick, by the way. I, I love the Vikings pick, by the way. That's a, that's a great uh, – that would be a great situation for you guys. It kind of gives you the, the Kirk Cousins uh, – it gives you the Kirk Cousins and it – Kirk Cousins plays for one more year while Hooker's getting healthy, learning the system, and then Hooker comes in and plays pl plays the position excellently. Obviously, and not happy that we're going to have to deal with a commanders team with Hunter on. If they don't, then you tra if you can, you trade back, pick up a second round pick, and you draft DTR in the second round if you're the Vikings. Yeah, yeah, DT DTR will be a good DTR would be a good pickup as well. For the Vikings, I'm thinking there's lots of uh, weirdly complete team when you look at it on paper. But the, we need depth at linebacker, but yeah. we have our three guys at middle linebacker. Um, we have a couple guys that other people don't know about who have shined at edge rusher. So, yes, you always want more, but I'm not super worried. Because they'll either keep Hunter or Z. They're not going to get rid of both of them. So to me, it's defensive tackle, cornerback, and quarterback. I know everybody says receiver, but I also think the Vikings love K.J. Osborne. Jalen Naylor was their guy. And they have done nothing but prop him up since day one. And I think they expect him to be the number three. So then... And there's no, there's not going to be any great receiver left at 23. I don't care what anybody says. There's two blue chip receivers in this draft, and neither of them are going to be there. That's just my thought on what the Vikings need. I don't know. Like, everybody keeps saying linebacker, and I'm like, our three, we have a rotation of three right now that are set. And even if you bring in a Drew Sanders, he's just going to be an athletic guy that doesn't play a ton this year. Yeah, and what what I think that the Vikings are missing a few like blue chippers as well would be a big would be something that I'd uh, would be something that I'd I'd like to put in uh, to the um, Vikings organization. It's they're just never, one like yeah. they made it clear they're never going to go blue chip player on defense. <laughs> they're not. They Which figure is, if they get around <laughs> 10, 15 in defense, they can outscore you. Yeah, I mean that, that's a like. I would hope I would I would hope that you can outscore um, 
on that. Who, who I'm looking for for the Vikings, though, is a guy like Emmanuel Forbes, uh, a bit further down the draft. If you can get, if you can get a guy like Emmanuel Forbes in the second round, he has the if most pick sixes. Pick on the second round pick. Hmm? We don't have a second round pick right now. That's why I said we'd have to trade back to get the DTR. Yeah. TJ Hawkinson was our second round pick. Yeah, if you if you trade if you if you if you manage to trade back. I mean, Emmanuel Forbes is a weird one. So I'm really high on Emmanuel Forbes because I believe that interception production in the SEC is a convertible stat to the NFL. And what isn't a convertible stat to the NFL often is body type. The NFL is filled with all sorts of body types. I don't think you'll see the Vikings take a corner. I'm not mad at your pick, but I don't think you'll see the Vikings take a corner until the late rounds because they have Murphy, who they brought in, as their number one. You got Booth and Evans, who played great last year until mm-hmm. they both got injured. Um, they're going to need more depth, but this is one of the deeper cornerback classes, too. So I think you'll see that depth added. And then they just signed that kid from New England who's 25. I forget his name off the top of my head. Um, I just think, I really think that, and people think I'm crazy, but I think the Vikings are going to come out the first round with a quarterback. No, I think that's a good, I think that's a good decision. I think it makes a lot of, the quarterback makes a lot of sense for you guys, Um, especially the Hayden Hooker quarterback pick. I, I wouldn't. I think Hayden Hooker is almost the perfect fit for the Vikings psyche. It's an almost more conservative pick, but in a really good way. Peter Schrager was saying that he was talk. He talked to at least twenty GMs who said Hayden Hooker's the smartest quarterback in the in the draft. Yeah, it makes sense. Like Hayden Hooker makes sense in the Vikings building one hundred percent. Like and it, it looks her cousins. Yeah, like, it looks like a good fit. Like it, it just. I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad at DTR either. I wouldn't like because I watched a lot of his film and like, or, and I just he reminds me a lot of like he plays like Hayden Hooker, but in a more pro style offense. And they're both very accurate and read defenses, and that to me is the two most important things. But maybe that's because for the last five years I got spoiled with a quarterback who's actually accurate and can read defenses where I had a lot of years before that besides Favre that couldn't do that. Yeah, definitely. Just to go back to the, just to go back to the Cowboys. Um, I think some of our late, so our first round needs should be blue chip, like straight off the bat, like just go get like some blue chip player, a Jalen Carter to solidify the defensive line. Hey, Bijan Robinson might actually be there for you guys it, though. And yeah. a lot of guys have a lot of teams won't draft him here, but have him as one of the top five talents in the draft. Yeah. If Bijan Robinson makes it down to 26, like run to the podium. Well, but I'm, like, it's not, it's not a very Jerry Jones way to draft moving up. He likes to have as many drafts, picks as he can so that he can sit on his yacht on the TV and show everybody where he's drafting from that year as many well, times as he possibly know, can. <laughs> Jerry, if you want a if you want a running back that you know is a top five running back, can do it out the backfield, <laughs> running the ball, 80 yard runs, it's a call. Second round pick, he's yours. <laughs> yeah. Delvin's on his way. Yeah, I would take Delvin Cook. I See, everybody's like they're going to cut Delvin. I'm like, first of all, they're not. If they cut him, it won't be until after June first, because that's a you can do it. Po- you can do post June first cut now, but um, I think they're waiting with Hunter Z and Delvin. Not that they'll trade all three, but one or two of them, I think they can use in trades in the draft to swap picks and move around. And they want to free up with one or two. they they got to move on from one or two of those guys anyway. And the Daniel Hunter thing is, is he wants another big contract because he's like playing for less than five million this year. But you got all your money up front. I'm so sick of players doing that shit. Like, oh, I'll sign a contract that averages me this much. It's front loaded. So then when I get to the back end, I'm crying because I'm not making as much, but I got it paid all in a <laughs> bonus up front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What well, one thing and about the Cowboys, um, about the Cowboys Nation this year is this want to go and take a tight end because we don't have Schultz anymore. It's, yeah, 
But Jake Ferguson and uh, Hendershot are unbelievable. Like that, we don't, don't need to do it in the first round. There's a lot yeah, of tight we don't ends need a in first, this draft. We don't need a first round tight end. Like that's it's not that's not going to change round that. tight end. I'm a big fan of the tight end position. I love the tight end position. If you have like if you have a Jason Kelsey, a Mark Andrews, that kind of guy, awesome. We have two very very good young tight ends. That's why it's okay for Dalton Schultz to walk. Because we have these guys like um, Hendershot was taking on a much bigger role at the end of the year. Ferguson is like other tight ends like Kelsey have praised Ferguson and said like on the uh, New Heights podcast, Kelsey's gone like, I love Ferguson down in Dallas. I think he's going to be a great tight end. Like we don't need a first round tight end. Cowboys Nation, shut the fuck up. Like we don't need that. I keep hearing that. that I keep hearing the same shit from the Vikings when it comes to corner and safety. It's like, bro, we have three starting caliber safeties on our team. Yeah. Like, can you stop? Like, just because you don't know who they are or the talking heads. Like, the Vikings don't need a safety. Quit giving us the safety from Alabama in your mock drafts. So we're not drafting him. It's absolutely fucking wild. Like, yeah, th- like, if I'm, if I'm the Vikings and I can get the turnover machine a cornerback, I feel like that does help you a lot. But later in the draft, like second, third round, like I'm I wouldn't not cry over a there. corner like in the first round if 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 the Hayden Hooker's gone and any defensive player you like if you saw a pass rusher, I hope Murphy's still there. But like anything, if that falls apart and you walk away with a good corner, I'm good with that. But mm-hmm. every Vikings fan seems to think they have to draft a corner early, and I'm like they have their starting three locked up. You can bring in other guys and there's still free agents out there who can help. You know what I mean? And like, they're like linebacker, linebacker. There's guys out there right now. There's not a lot of linebackers in the draft. So if you, unless you get lucky and somebody just drops to you, you're reaching. And at very worst, call up Anthony Barr again. He's a free agent. Maybe he wants to come back to Minnesota for a final year or two to be, you know, like there's, guys that can fill in behind i just people freak out real fast because they're like we only got five of these guys on the team and it's like there's a whole nother wave of free agency again after the draft yeah what 100 it, it that doesn't that doesn't make a lot of sense to me a position a position group that i think the cowboys could invest in a little bit the offensive line like just getting generally younger in the offensive line, we could do with a. Um, I mean, obviously, we could do with um, with Tyron uh, with Tyron Smith being out and Tyler Tyler Smith, but did an excellent job at left tackle. So we don't need the left tackle this year. That's that's okay. Don't need don't need the left tackle desperately, but in. In the future, the hope is that Tyron is that Tyron Smith can go out to Pasha's New. There's no like he's he's injured all the time, and then we have a left offensive guard. We have Ty, uh, we have Smith, um, Smith the younger Tyler Smith standing there. And also, I'm desperate for a center. I like Tyler Biadish, but he's not showing. Uh, he's not showing the progression that we need him we need him to show. So I'm desperate for a center as well. So this is just me thinking. Oh shit! Friday the NFL draft starts at seven in the morning for you. Yeah, that's okay. That's Friday better than when it normally starts NFL in the UK. Draft at seven in the morning is very strange to me. Yeah, that's that's okay. It's better than when I'm in the UK. It starts at like eleven or midnight, so this is actually way better. Okay, and if you're gonna watch Thursday, you got to be up at six in the morning. Well, Maddie froze with a nice little smile on his face. At least, like he's all picturesque and shit on the screens. So for me, I just think the Vikings really need to focus on um, build up that defense. If you can get your quarterback, go get him. If not, don't do not do something crazy like trade the farm for Anthony Richardson or some crazy shit like that. 
and just build that defense. Build that defense. Be flowing the defense. All right, you guys. Well, Maddie's frozen up. Make sure you look below in the description. Anybody from Street Beefs already knows, but please donate to our boy Jay Gotham, his family, to help cover the funeral expenses. Rest in paradise, my brother. Uh, you will greatly be missed. One of the best people I've met in a long time. So my prayers and thoughts go out to Jay Gotham's family, Street Beef Scrapyard, and all of Street Beefs and anybody who was ever around Jay Gotham felt Jay Gotham's energy. So please, again, go donate to Jay Gotham's family. They could really help it. The link will be in the description. All right, guys. Well, as Maddie would say, thanks for watching. Cheerio. And one world, one love. Deuces.